Ok. Gracias a usted, muy amable. Ok, bye bye. Ok, guys. Um, the problem? Uh, it was the, the account with the. I have, it had my um, my email, and then I had to switch to the to English Corporativo's email. So details, okay. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, well, okay. let's get started. Uh, as I sent uh, a WhatsApp today, it was the, my name is Luis Avellan. So I'm going to be your instructor for these four weeks. And well, uh, expectations, I guess that, you know, you will have, uh, maybe the the idea of learning and practicing your English, right? So basically, that's my objective as well to be part and help, you know, somehow, you know, to your uh, learning process. And I see that at this level, um, most of the topics that we have are a little bit, a little bit more complex, I would say, but you know, we can always add something extra, which is our participation, okay? Because I think that's gonna be more important because here there are some explanations about some topics, but they, there are very few examples or the examples are based on a text, right? But uh, remember that the best thing in these cases is that you practice you know, with your own language, with your own ideas, with your own, um, let's say, uh, living experience, okay? So that's why, you know, I will always ask you to participate and give opinions. So take advantage of that time, okay? Uh, I don't know if you have any questions or the uh, comments or anything that you would like to uh, to add. How long have you been in this program? Who's, for example, like the first or second time or you know, the, that you have been in this program or you have been in this program for, let's say a couple of months or a year maybe. How long have you been here, Giovanni? Okay, thank you so much for asking. Uh, actually, this is my third time here. Okay. Probably this is, yeah, I, I don't know how, 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 how many months, but a couple of months in here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, from advanced English one, I guess. All right. Pretty advanced. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, what about you, uh, Jorge Alberto? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Mm, I am fine. I need to practice my English more. Okay. And I need to get rid of the person talking with me. All right. Yeah. That's it, that's what it, I... very, for me is very complicated when the person talking with me. I don't get it. Uh, all the information. Okay. Good. Yes. You know that's we need to be exposed to the language. Good. How about yes. you, Hector? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Yeah, for me is I have around six months to to study with the English corporativo. Okay. For me, uh, has the better experience for me for my life because I can learn in a lot of things in as English skill with with us. Okay, great, good. And Jenny? What's your experience, Jenny? Your microphone, I think, is off. No. It seems to be on, but we don't listen to you. Now I think it's... No, something is wrong with the mic. Okay. Joselino, how about you? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. I started in, from intermediate three here corporation English corporation okay yes good 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 
Okay, so then a uh, little by little, I will know a little bit more about everyone, right? So then, uh, well, I'm going to check the attendance in at eight thirty more or less, so that to see if, if more people uh, log in later, right? So just let me make sure. Yes, let's see if anybody else is waiting. Okay, so. So we have. I will share my screen. Mister, by the way, Jenny, she's writing on the chat. Yes, just when I'm checking here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably she won't be able to. Well, it is right. Okay. And yeah, let me see, but probably because of the but the link is here. Right, this link. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Well, it always happens. Okay, now, uh, do you see the the screen right, the video? Okay, so this is the introduction. There is a video here, and this is just in English. And then please pay, pay some attention to, to what it is going on in the video. And at the end, so we're going to, to discuss, right? Some questions about it what you heard, a vocabulary probably that is new, like you were saying, uh, concentrate and focus, because uh, sometimes uh, they speak fast, but it's not exactly the, because they speak fast that we don't get the the meaning. Sometimes it's because we are not used to, uh, to the intonation, accent, and probably some new words, right? So now please listen. And at the end, it's about, well, it's about four minutes or something. And then we're going to talk about it. Molly, come on, Ellen, tell us the story. Well, this all took place many years ago. Before it was turned into a campground, this land had been a farm. It was owned by a young couple named Theodore and Dolly McShane. Mr. McShane had inherited the land from a relative. So what's so scary about that? I thought this was supposed to be a spooky story. I'm getting to that. Just wait. The McShanes were wonderful people. Friendly, sociable, everybody loved them. And they really, really loved each other. Everybody could see it. When they were walking down the street together, they always held hands. When he was working in the fields, he always picked her wild flowers and brought them home to her in the evening. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Oh no, then something bad happened, right? Yes. One day, as Theodore was coming home from town, he saw smoke in the distance. It had been a very hot, dry summer, so fires were a real danger. And was there a fire at the farm? Yes. And as he was hurrying down the road, the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, blacker and blacker. All he could think about was his wife. But by the time he got home, the house was completely in flames. He screamed Dolly's name over and over, but she didn't answer. She was in the house? She died in the fire? Yes. It was a terrible tragedy. What happened then? Well, the poor man went crazy. 
He refused to believe that Dolly had died. For months, he searched for her. He walked all day and night through the countryside and through the town, searching, searching. And in his hands, he always carried a bouquet of wild flowers for his poor, dead bride. So how did it turn out? What finally happened to him? That's the spooky part. It's a mystery. People saw him less and less. And then Theodore McShane just disappeared. No one ever saw him again. But the people who live here say he still walks the forest at night looking for his lost bride. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you ladies. I was making my rounds and wanted to see if everything is all right. Yes, a park ranger, of course. Yes, everything's fine. Ellen was telling us a spooky story when you came by. Campfire stories, huh? That's always fun. Well, okay then. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for checking on us, and sorry about the screams. Oh, that's okay. I'm used to it. Hey, in the morning, you ladies should take a look down that path. There's a field full of wildflowers in there in bloom right now. Very pretty. Oh, that's good to know. We'll do that, thanks. Here's some for you to enjoy. In case you need anything, I'll be at the ranger station. Thanks again. Oh, what's your name? I'm Ted. Theodore, really. But my friends call me Ted. Ted McShane. You have a good night. But by the time he got home, the house was All right. So, what is the what happened in that story? You know, they mean they. How do they actually? How do they call the story? What's they mention like two or three words to refer to the to the kind of a story the lady was telling the other girls. What were yeah. those words? Mm -hmm. huh? Spooky. Spooky? Yes. Horror uh -huh. movie. Uh -huh. it was first it was a spooky story right and the the ranger used another word it says like campfire campfire stories right he used campfire stories this is not when when we gather at night and then uh, we start telling this kind of uh well you can also call them you know frightening stories Okay, frightening stories, and also we can call uh, maybe uh, a, a what? Probably they would be a, like um, scary, scary stories, scary, frightened, spooky, and then uh, campfire stories, different kinds, right? So there are different ways to call them. Good. Uh, what was the story about? Can we recreate uh, what? You were listening to? Anybody who wants to? Eduardo, Luis Eduardo, maybe you want to tell what happens at the beginning. You don't have to tell me the story. Just, you know, what you heard at the beginning. For example, where did the girl? Uh, okay, for example, where did the girl? Um, A try or heard the story. Where was she when she listened to, to the story? Completely okay, and watch the first intro video we have for you.
Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. I just heard a story about this campground. What do you mean? What about it? I was just at the bathhouse. I had taken a shower. Where was she? She was at the bath house. Okay. So that means that they are in a campground, right? In a area where they can go camping, but it's supposed to be safe, right? Because there is a house, a principal house. And then she was in the bath, right? And then she heard a lady. And was brushing my teeth when this woman came in with her daughter. She, she was telling her the story, so I listened in. Okay, so she was brushing her teeth, right? And then uh, she listened to this uh, lady telling the story to her daughter. Okay, so you know, these are the details that probably... Uh, Later, you can still watch this uh, video. What's so interesting about this old campground? It isn't. And then you can, you know, pause it and see that you will get more than when you listen to it at once. And you can listen to it like two, three times. And this could be a technique to improve your listening. And also you can check new vocabulary, right? New words that you might listen. That's why the girl says it. What is so inter interesting about this campground? Isn't scary, is it? Because scary stories freak me. You see, this is scary. Now she uses a scary story. Okay, they also spooky story, then campfire stories. So they are using different expressions to name the same thing, right? Okay. Me out. Don't be such a chicken, Molly. Come on, Ellen, tell us the story. Okay, don't be such a uh, chicken is, you know, like to be covert, right? So be, be brave, okay? Uh, and uh, don't be, don't be so, uh, let's say, uh, chicken when you listen to this type of stories. Okay, then what happened, uh, let's say, in the middle? When the guy tells the name, his last name, the flowers, what is like, you know, like the, like the end of this? Raise your hand. Anybody can answer, okay? Don't be shy. Remember, participate doesn't matter if it is right or wrong answer, okay? Or you just say something, yeah, it doesn't matter, okay? Just try to see what you understood, okay? Tell me a couple of ideas and then we reconstruct the rest. Yes, Giovanni, tell me. Okay, actually, for me, that was so funny. <laughs> uh, it because, actually was. Yeah, because all things uh, that a girl was telling to, uh -huh. to her friends match so well with the name, <laughs> the postman that he came to her at the uh -huh. meantime, and he, he gave her flowers as a story, uh -huh. as a story. And and it's so funny because at the beginning it's like, okay, I'm so sorry. We were scared for, it. we were talking uh, in this situation, and she said that she was telling a spooky story. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, when she when yeah when she realized the name to to the policeman, uh, they were really really uh, once again scary for that. They tried to. To run about to run it. to run away, right? They run yeah, away, to run away because mm -hmm. you know they say, okay, this guy might come back. Yeah, I don't know. About it. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know if it was just a coincidence or the guy was really the one, you know, in the story. But uh, yeah, it was scary and funny at the same time, right? Because uh, you know they were talking about him or at least someone with that name, and you know, all of a sudden he shows up. With the flowers, he said that his name is Theodore, and then McCain, and they, McShane, I think it was, and then he, yeah, I mean, everything goes, I, uh, we know with an unexpected ending, right? Remember that jokes and stories like this usually, what makes them funny or scary is the unexpected ending, right? Because when we already know what's going to happen, then if it is a joke, we don't laugh because we know 
And if it is a scary story, if we know the end, we know what is going to happen. So we're not really that scared. But, you know, when we are not expecting something to happen, so then, oof, you know, we get scared about it. Okay, good. So then this is the video that they use for the introduction. And then you can say, for example, when they are using when, after, okay, before, okay, when the lady die. I mean, these are also keywords for the lesson for this unit, because we're going to be talking about a uh, time closes, okay, when something happened. And for example, it says in this class, participants will be listening to a conversation where time closes are used in context, okay? For example, uh, when, uh, for example, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a doctor, okay? Uh, when I listened to that story for the first time or when I saw that video the first time, I really got scared when the guy came in and show up, you know, when the girls were talking. So, you know, the first time. Now this is like the second, third time I watched the video then I wasn't that scared, right? Because I knew that that was going to happen. And so this is, for example, when I am using time closes, when I first watched the video, I was not, I, I was scared, okay? After I watched the video twice, I was not that scared about the story. So you see, I am using a time close. When I watch it first, and after I have already watched it. So then this is, you know, what we are going to be uh, learning how to use the time closes in different situations, right? Now let's listen to this conversation. So how were you like when you were younger? Listen to the conversation and find out what made Carol and Alan change. I was really immature. Part A. Listen and practice. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduating from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. But then I went off to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was... Independent. Where did you work? I worked for my... Okay, so here, for example, you have, well, check, take a look at it. Is, are there any questions about vocabulary or expressions that might be new or maybe will hinder your understanding? No problem? Okay, so then here, we, when you see the first two lines, the first one says, so what were you like when you were younger? Okay, and it says, when I was a kid, I was kind of responsible. Okay, I think that many of us, probably not all, have gone through, through that moment, right? In which we are not really responsible, but there are some other kids that they are very responsible all the time. Then, oh, you really, what made you change? Okay, the turning point is when you say, for example, what was the moment in which the change came up? Okay, in this case, it was graduating from high school. Say, what do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I had never had any important responsibilities, but then I went off to college. Okay, so then it says, you know what you mean? I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? 
this is the guy he says i think i became more mature after i got my first job so in our lives we always have a turning point okay probably we can say i used to be a, let's say a free spirit right i mean i used to go everywhere at any time you know any day so i didn't care much about time and uh, time and dates right so then i could go to many places until I got married, okay? When I got married, so I changed a lot and then I started to be more uh, responsible and I settled down, okay? Settled down, okay? So this is the turning point. Now continue watching the video. My dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was really important to me. Why was that so important? Well, I was about 11. I remember that having a dog, you know, he was mine, made me feel really responsible in a funny kind of way. He would follow me everywhere and was always waiting for me when I came home from school. Actually, that sounds kind of nice. I never got to have a dog, but I remember when I got my first bicycle. That was a very important day for me. For the first time, I could go out on my own and go as far as I wanted to. I used to polish the bicycle every day and take really good care of it. Of course, that only lasted a few months and then I lost interest in it. So, what was another turning point for Carol and Alan? Sure, one. Uh, okay, what were those turning points? Yes, Oscar. What does she mean when she when she says when I got my dog Kepper? What does Kepper mean? Pepper is the name of the dog. Okay, oh. but but Pepper, remember that is also what uh, you know the condiment that we use sometimes also for food, right? So then uh, it's um in this case is the name of the dog but also peppers that we use uh, for certain food, right? To give some special uh, wow, uh, right. flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. But what were those turning points? Okay, for example, when we had uh, here, well, you can use, if you want the box down here to write, uh, for example, uh, for the lady was when, when she got, uh, her dog, Pepper, right? Okay, that was the moment. And then we can uh, probably explain. Okay, what she was, right here. And what happened to when she got it there? Okay, she became what? more uh, responsible. Okay, so we can use that one. Okay, when she got her dog, Pepper, she became more, uh, more responsible. Okay, what happened with the guy? What did he get? In which moment was his turning point? Yes, Julio Cesar. When he uh, got his bike. Exactly, right? When he got a bike, yes, then he said that was the turning point for him. It was a very important moment, he said, right? Something like that. Yes, that's correct. Okay, and then uh, now in the chat, in the chat of the class here, please write, for example, a turning point in your life or in your recent life. It may be true or it may be uh, something invented. You can make it up. It doesn't matter, right? So for example, you know, um, I, let's say, for example, I, when I was, Let me see, when I was uh, 17, 
I was really uh, careless. Okay. Uh, I became uh, more careful. When I started the university, it's not true, right? Just okay. Then think about a moment how, uh -huh. when I was 13, I learned how to drive. Wow, Oscar. Yeah. No, I learned when I was about 17, too. Okay, that's a reality. Okay, good. I was more responsible when my grandmother died. Okay, I'm really sorry for that, Rosalina, but good because you became more, more responsible. Okay, nice. What else? Come on, start writing, writing ideas. Right now, I'm not paying attention to the spelling or whatever, just the idea that you have about this. In my case, and Turning point was when I got my first serious job. Okay, good. You know, and that is true because sometimes we get jobs and they are not, yeah, you know, this part time or eventually, right? Just for uh, some some moments. Okay, just for some events. Good, Oscar. I like that one. Okay, another okay, another one. Come on, Catherine, Neftali. Uh, Francisco, Oscar to no, write sentences. Don't be shy. Sofia, Jenny. Ah, okay, here we go. Nice. Very good. Everybody wants. When I was 20 years old, I rode a horse. Oh, okay. That's, you know, to be brave. I was more responsible when my son was born. Yeah. Uh, when I was 17, I began to work and I got my first job. When I got my university degree, I began to have new interests. When I was a child, I remember I had more responsibilities to care my to take care, to take care of my siblings and my study. Okay, good, Carla. Oh, yes, no, that was. Yes, Carla. Uh, I became more responsible when my father died. Okay, I'm sorry for that. When I was 16, I had my first dog. Okay, that's good. And I was more responsible when I learned to drive a truck. Really, Marlon? Wow. That's, you have to be very, very careful. Uh, is it difficult? But track? Yes, very difficult. I was uh, learning uh, huh. learn to drive a truck when I was 11 years old because my father was working at Policia Nacional Civil. Uh -huh. The PNC, and, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and he drive this truck when he going to the other places and he came to come to the house and <laughs> I was mischievous mischievous yes and okay. I I like I like okay. to drive I came to drive okay good you know the uh, I mean it's uh it's really a nice experience but also it is also good when we learn things especially when we are younger for example, you know, learning to how to drive at a young age is good because it's easier, right? Uh, when people learn how to drive uh, uh, when they are older, so we are more conscious, we are more afraid. So, you know, from 11 to probably 12, 15 years old is, is good. Okay, it's not bad because you, you get more experience. Okay, also, you know, for learning languages is, is good, we you know, when we start at a young age, okay, because we have more time, we have more time to practice and more chances too. 
Like see, Giovanni, when I was a child, didn't take care of my own decisions, but I became more realist, became realistic, and I learned to make decisions when I went out to the country and live alone. Yes, that's true. There is where we see the reality, aren't you, Giovanni? <laughs> yes, it's true. Okay, fine. Okay, people. Then uh, uh, remember that if you can, I mean, you write your sentence, you can put it there in the chat and then we can read it, right? So then that everybody participates. If you have a doubt or a question, uh, also let me know about the topic. If you see the idea is to use, right, right now we're using when, but also you can use word uh, such as uh, after. Okay, let me write it here in the chat. Okay, we can use after. Uh, until, okay, until uh, before, okay, as soon as, okay, these are other, uh, let's say, uh, words that we can use to connect one idea with an uh, to another, right? For example, after I graduated, I got my first job. Okay, uh, until I got my first job, I could buy my own car. Okay, I am just inventing ideas, right? Uh, I didn't go, um, I couldn't go to university. No, no, that one wouldn't work. Before, before going to university, I worked for one year, okay? Before going to the university, I worked for one year. And as soon as I finished uh, my career in the university, I started to work. So I mean, immediately after, right? Not before. Or you can also say, I started working before I finished my career in the university or before I finished university, which has happened, which happens sometimes. Okay. So, but all these words are a, let's say, um, let's say connectors that will help you to talk about the time process, right? By the end of this lesson, participants will learn to use subordinating conjunctions. Here we go. This is the continuation. Then I went off to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. Okay, this is since this is listening, that's why you know you can see the, the screen is blur. The idea is not to read, so don't try to. It's not your computer, right? It's just a listening exercise. Listen again. And find out what made Carol and Alan change. I was really immature. Part A. Listen and practice. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduating from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. But then I went off to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was really important to me. Why was that so important? Well, I was about 11. I remember that having a dog, you know, he was mine, made me feel really responsible in a funny kind of way. He would follow me everywhere and was always waiting for me when I came home from school. Actually, that sounds kind of nice. I never got to have a dog. But I remember when I got my first bicycle. That was a very important day for me. For the first time, 
I could go out on my own and go as far as I wanted to. I used to polish the bicycle every day and take really good care of it. Of course, that only lasted a few months, and then I lost interest in it. So, what was another turning point for Carol and Alan? Okay, the idea here was, you know, to, to see, for example, you know, what are those events that have uh, made us change our life? And those are the turning points, right? Uh, you know, I could read when you were uh, writing in the chat that when you say, for example, I became more responsible when I had to leave the country and live alone. Uh, other sad stories like, you know, I became more responsible when my father died or when my grandmother died. Okay, but you know, sometimes those are the the real moments, right? So that is the reality. And that's, uh, that's why, you know, sometimes I like to go out of the text and then, you know, apply it to, to our life, right? What it really happens, you know, how we are going to use it. For example, let's talk about your Let's say your jobs, okay? What is a turning point? Or if there is anything that has made your, made, made, uh, let's say, uh, what has made you change somehow, attitude or probably one of your partner's attitude, how have they changed during the time that you have been working, okay? You raise your hand or I pick up someone at random. Okay, let's see. A name I became more responsible when I when I got married. Yes, yeah, Joselino. Well, you know, this is for example, that's the and what made you change? Joselino in that case. Okay, when you got married, you became more responsible. But what made you change exactly uh, the responsibility to pay the house uh, yes yes in my house clean my house is uh i going i going uh, to work and when my uh born my daughter mm -hmm. our daughter yes it's more responsible okay so yes. all the activities, right? All the responsibilities that come along with the marriage yes. made you change. Okay, yes. good. Okay, nice. You know, this is like a kind of philosophical class, right? You know, the, what are the things that make us change in life? What else? What is another thing that makes us change? Uh, let's see. Sophia? Sophia Elizabeth? Oh, by the way, now I think there are the majority are here. Let me check the attendance. Yes, teacher. Okay, what has made you change in your life, Sophia? Sorry, repeat, please. What are uh, what are some things that have made you change in your life? Probably that what has made you more responsible or if you are now or less responsible now okay okay one thing that i may uh, me feel more responsible is when i uh, have a child my okay. son okay. that made you change right yeah. when okay. i enter to the university when i uh, learn to new language uh, like English. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when I when I have to to take care of my grandmother, and but she she has passed away. Uh -huh, okay. Yes, that's another reason, right? Okay, good. Just give me one minute. I'm just uh, going to mention your name if you stay present, please. Francisco Antonio is here. Yes, teacher, I'm here. Okay, yes. oh, wait a minute, this is not giving me. Okay, uh, Giovanni is here, yes. 
Hector Perez yes, also, here. right? Yes, Hector. And Ibrahim. Yes, Ivan. Present, teacher present. Yes, good. Uh, Jose Manuel, Joel Emanuel, sorry. Joel is not here, right? Okay, and Jorge Alberto. Present, teacher. Yes, good. Joselino, yes. Yes. Julio Cesar, yes. Uh, Carla Selena. Present. Oh, yes, Carla Selena is here. And then we have Carla Rene. Carla Rene, no. Okay, Carla Rene. And Julio Cesar, yes. Campos. Yes, she's here. Good. Catherine. Present teacher. Yes, I saw you here. Luis Eduardo Mendez. Present teacher. Okay, good. And Marlene Elizabeth. Marlene. Ah, yes, I see you, Marlene. Present. And Melissa Stephanie. Present. Yes, there you are. Michelle Matris. Michelle, Michelle. No. And Neftali, yes, right? Yeah, present teacher. Oscar Alexander. Present teacher. Okay, good. Uh, Oscar Abdulio. I'm on here. Yes, there you are. Romeo Vladimir. I saw Romeo. Where is Romeo? I'm here, teacher. Oh, yes, there you are. Yes. And Sara Elisa. Present. Yes, there you are. Sofia, yes, is here too. Wendy Paola. Where's okay, Wendy? Present teacher. Xiomara Violeta. Present. There you are. And Jenny Carolina. Yes. Anybody I didn't that I is there anybody that I didn't mention? No? Okay, only Carla Rene and oh, well. Mr. Carla Rene is here. Where? She's here. Actually, I guess that she is struggling oh. with her audio. Yeah, and, uh, yeah I can see here. her now. I can see her now. Yes. Uh, sorry. And Carla Salina too. Yes. Teacher, thank you very much. Yes. I am here. No, yes, yes, Wendy. I, uh, I got thank you. Thank you. Thank yes, you. you're here. Two, five, ten, fifteen. Yeah, just one. Who's the other one missing? Okay, good. So, well, people, then uh, we're going to, almost we have one more minute to go. And well, tomorrow I'm going to, well, I'm going, I always, I will connect earlier. I always connect 10 minutes before. So in case you have any, uh, let's say uh, doubts, questions, uh, you know, you can log in uh, also a little bit earlier, right? So I'm gonna be here at 7.50 and, and we can talk, right? About uh, any topic that you want or doubts that you may have. And well, sometimes, uh, well, you have the WhatsApp too, but in case, in case um, I cannot answer, you know, reply during the day, I will at least, you know, let you know that I will let me know the problem so that we can solve it during the class, right? So, um, because sometimes uh, I might not have time during the day. Sometimes I will, maybe sometimes I won't. But at 7.50, you know, I will be here so that we can solve out any uh, issues that you may have, okay? So then- sure. Yes, tell me. Is is it suitable right now to start to fill in the uh, filling up the uh, platform activities? Oh, okay. Good question. Good question, uh, Oscar. Right? Yes. Uh, you may uh, start filling out activities, and remember that you can work at your own pace. Actually, the next exercise is the uh, knowledge check. So where you have to identify, for example, the sentences. Uh, if you don't do it, 
tomorrow. If you don't have time, then during the class, we'll, I will give you some minutes to do it by yourself. And after we're going to check the answers here as a group, right? But you know, but the first, um, but first, you know, it's good if you try to do it by yourself so that you can do the thinking activity, right? And um, and after, you know, we can uh, uh, we can discuss and probably uh, see if we have any any other issues, right? For example, this is the next one here. You can you may start here. Knowledge check. Then match the closest with the appropriate information and choose the best answer. So from here, you're gonna see by the time I was 15, then uh, you say I began to understand the value of money. So I learned. So you're gonna match. Yes, let me. Okay, you're gonna find only one. Okay, I have learned how to take care of myself because we're talking about something the past perfect. Okay, if you're not really sure about something, then tomorrow I will explain a little bit more about this. All right. Okay, teacher, thank you. No, oh, thank you. Right, so I'm really sorry for the minutes at the beginning. Okay. Don't uh, worry. I will. Yes, I'll see you tomorrow then. Uh, Seven fifty. But the class, you know, officially starts at eight. Okay, so you have to be exactly at that time. Okay, so have a very good night. My pleasure. Good night, teacher. See you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.